Welcome back, everyone, to another Company of Fears 2 replay cast. This time we are gonna have a 2v2 on uh, Minsk outskirts. It is, I believe, sent in by Adamir Magnum. He's over here playing as the Wehrmacht, as you can see, and his buddy is gonna be the Pussy Destroyer. Of course. <laughs> He's also playing as the Wehrmacht. And their enemies are gonna be Spielfuhrer as the Brits and top star Americans. So we have Western Front's armies versus the Wehrmacht. We'll see. We shall see. So Minsk Pocket, of course, uh, you guys ever, you know, you just you just know, you know. I don't need to, I don't need to look at this. This is like, it's been the same for you know, a long, long time. <laughs> Fucking Minsk Pocket. This map is just like, man, I'm trying to, Jesus Christ, I can't. I, I appear to be retarded. Anyway, uh, looks like we have some MGs. Who could have fuck it? MGs on Misk Pocket. Never seen this before. Anyway, we do have um, Vickers of Tommies has been trained. coming in. Uh, you know, Vickers, Tommies versus Machine Gun, you know, MG42, and uh, Grenz. Top Star. Well, we see just a couple of riflemen. Not much for him. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, let's just speed it up a little bit. Not much going on. Actually, first engagement. We do have an infantry section fighting it out with some pioneers, but you know, pioneer is not gonna have an easy time. Of course, there is an MG42 as well over here, which is pretty great for our German players. There's also a Vickers for the Brits though, so the Vickers will set up first. And, uh, yeah, this is not good for the Pioneers, and it's not good for the MG42 crew either. As, uh, it's very likely, it's very likely that the Vickers crew will just win this engagement. Oh, almost wiping out the Pioneer, but he manages to escape just barely. And the right side, it seems like we have, um, we have riflemen fighting it off with some uh, Grenadiers, and the Grenadiers are definitely on the receiving end of that. So here he comes, Rifleman capping the point, that's okay for him. And also uh, manages to get, you know, Spielfuhrer manages to get his infantry section around the infantry 42 and uh, send it packing back home. Mm, that was a good flank by the Pioneers, the problem is he can't really, he doesn't have enough damage on these British. Like, he probably needed to wait until his Grand Ears were coming back from the base. Yeah, right now it seems like the Pioneers will just, will just get chewed up, and uh, yeah, that almost looks like a wipe. It is a wipe. So, Adamir Magnum, in the first few engagements, not really having the best of times. You have that his friend over here, Pussy Destroyer, has decided to go for the center fuel, and that's a good idea, but he's losing the right side, and he's going to get his MV42 flanked as well. So, as you can see, he's trying to get the, uh, set up to fire at these riflemen, but here comes the second rifleman squad. So, if... Um, you know, Grenadier squad and the Rifleman being one against one, I'm pretty sure that the Rifleman will win this engagement at this point. And the left side is still going again for the Brits. Probably because of, um, you know, Adamir Magnum. He really needed to wait until... Oh, it looks like... Uh, no, 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 it is the same. He really needed to wait until his uh, Grenadiers were all back because only one Grenadier versus two rifle sections, that is not going to work. So now the Universal Carrier can just do his own thing. But it looks like the UC will die. So that's, I guess, pretty good. Tried to use uh, suppression, but it wasn't nearly, nearly quick enough. So he was just uh, destroyed. Pretty good for the Axis. Now they can move up and retake the right side of the map. Their fuel point is surrounded by allied strategic points, which is not good. And when they go to capture the strategic points, it's likely that the allies will just grab the fuel. So that's not very great. It seems like uh, we will need, if uh, you know, we're talking from the perspective of our allied players, we will need to continue putting harassment down on the fuel point. The Germans, on the other hand, will need to try to... Whoa, that's a lot of wind. We'll need to try to f kind of uh, consolidate their position over the fuel and over the right side. 
because it seems like the left side might be a bit of a forlorn hope. Hey, this engagement is actually going pretty well for the Axis, because we've got the MG42 coming in for support. But is it enough? I mean, there's still two infantry sections, and it seems like the machine gun is a little bit too far to actually fire. So that's not good, and uh, not many reinforcements coming in from either side. So that's, of course, going to uh, be an advantage to the Germans, because they're closer to the base, and they can get more guys in quicker. But still, lots of casualties for the access to retake that fuel point, which is right next to the base. So it's really starting to look bad for them. They are triple capped and they're being pushed all the way to their base. They're losing the control over their fuel point on a mince clock. And that is not easy to do and it's not good to do. So yeah, they're gonna need to really, uh, you know, step it up and try to, again, hold this fuel point because they need it absolutely. And then start to branch out onto the right side of the map because if they lose either uh, or if they lose both the left and right hand side, well then they lose on the VP side. If they lose the fuel, then they lose in the teching race. So they need to win both of those things, or at least draw. And yeah, it looks like the lieutenant will be coming in. Ooh, a half track. That is a good decision from Top Star. Uh, the A half track will help very greatly in keeping these Nazis pinned into the base. And if he can uh, keep this thing alive, it's going to be a great sort of mobile uh, suppression platform because, yeah, that's that's what the uh, the Americans need right now. It's suppression. Uh, and also, well, there's a sniper on the field, which might be annoying. The flak half trick might help to deal with that, although it's kind of unlikely. Okay, Germans finally going on the right side, but considering that they have no AT, it's uh, kind of unlikely, I say, that they can uh, they can use the uh, they can use their infantry on the right side to good effect because the flak half trick will just be continuously barraging them with auto cannon fire and preventing them from doing anything. Sniper is getting kills and it's protected by an MG42 but it's not veteran C1 so the MG42 cannot actually pop armor piercing and kill or at least ward off the AA half track. So this, is, so this is actually pretty risky to use the sniper aggressively because he's uh, you know he's got no defense against the AA. Speaking of AA, we do have buffers, and uh, the buffers is being supported, I guess, by a Ford assembly. So that is the uh, that is the Sim City, Sim City Doctrine. Ooh, we have some artillery coming in from base. Yeah, well, one gun, not exactly the most effective thing in the world. Not exactly the most effective thing. Anyway, uh, it seems like. Uh, the Germans are still trying to focus on the right side, and they're still getting kind of derped by the A half track. So MG42 needs to run away without Veteran C1. Again, these MGs are very, very helpless against the glory that is the A half track. And now with the MGs out of the picture, it's yeah, it's pretty likely that the A can just deal with the Grenadiers. Here comes finally a pack gun from uh, Pussy Destroyer, and uh, he can use that not only to kill the AA half track or at least ward it off, he can also use it to do some damage to the buffers and eventually suppress that thing. Uh, you know, that would be very, very good. MG42 is moving up for Adamir. He's trying to just kind of creep up with the MGs. Um, that's an okay choice. He's also got a sniper moving on the left. So his sniper is starting to get some decent kills. And he can just continue to do that. Not bad at all. Oh no. Looks like the infantry section decided to move forward. And well, that did not work. Grenade. Not gonna work all either. So a half track is still around. Uh, we do have a major on the field for Top Star, so now he's gonna be looking towards either a Sherman or an Emmett Scott. I'm, I'm guessing um, both would be good for different reasons. And 
Whereas the Germans are... 2-2-2. Eh, 2-2-2 two, two, two. Uh, two, two, two for countering the AA half-track. That is gonna work. Well done. So combining the A... Uh, T... The AT gun and the 2-2-2. Two, 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 manages to get the kill on the AA. That's not bad. And, uh, yeah, the reason why I was thinking of the M8 squad as well is because of the anti-tank gun. So, like, the Sherman would be in trouble if it, you know, moved into the enemy, tried to attack, but it met the anti-tank gun. Whereas the M8 squad would be the perfect counter to deal with the, uh, Pac-40. Rangers also on the field for Top Star. So now he's gonna be starting to get some elite infantry, and... Not like he's doing badly on the infantry front. Still got some good riflemen uh, getting veterancy. His main problem is that he's not using his 400 munitions to basically upgrade his riflemen, which is a big problem, of course. Now the lieutenant will just easily deal with those uh, grenadiers. That's not, you know, wasn't at all uh, in doubt, but scout car can just force away the lieutenant. Also, the lieutenant is going to run away through the panzer grenadier. So that is not very good, and I'm thinking that that's going to be a wipe, but the Rangers might save the Lieutenant. Yes, the Rangers will save the Lieutenant. Can they save themselves, though? They're taking a lot of fire from the STG-44s, but they've got the Thompson, so yes, they will prevail over the Panzer Grenadier, and now they will definitely kill the normal Grenadiers as well. So still, despite some uh, gains by the German army, we still have mostly Allied superiority over the right side and over the center as well. So as you can see, this infantry section is now trying to move in and do its own thing. Um, not being the most effective due to the MG42s, but still, not bad that he's there. Mines being laid by the sappers uh, from Spielführer. That is a pretty good decision, of course, because he is, uh, you know, he's not, he's not met any vehicles, but there might be vehicles coming in, and of course, also, you know, might just catch some infantry and do some damage. Ford Assembly is helping him um, maintain his control over the center area of the map, and now the Rangers and the American player with a Sherman that's being built will try to again reestablish the right side as an um, Anglo-American zone. Of course, uh, great Bofors Barrage. There's actually a 3-inch mortar emplacement as well, so really going all in on those emplacements for the Brits, of course. That is because of the SimCity Doctrine. Thinks that he's going to make some good use of that. But the SimCity, ah, uh, the SimCity, you just, you're building yourself into a pit with the SimCity. Because, of course, if the SimCity dies... And it's not that difficult to destroy if you're uh, gonna focus on it as a German player. Then the SimCity is worthless. So, you now usually it's just much better to have a versatile mobile force than a retarded SimCity. But uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Sherman's moving in on the left, actually, along with a bunch of uh, American infantry. So I wonder if they're trying to take the fuel point. That's a bad idea with the Sherman, though, because they know that there's the pack guns over here. And yep, he will find the pack, and the pack can just easily set up and get some fire off on that Sherman. This also allows the other Germans over here, Pussy Destroyer and his gang, to come in and cap the right side of the map. Sherman tries to uh, flank around. Pretty good decision. Uh, gonna get some kills and results on that MG42. Wiped out. Well done. Uh, now he can try to steal it. Uh, will it be protected by the bunkers? No. So MG42 for the allies for free. Not bad. Oh boy. That is dangerous. Wonder if the mortars can uh, reach there. Probably not, but it's still pretty dangerous to blob up like this when there's enemy mortars and Shermans and, you know, things that can do HE. Ooh. Now he's taking a lot of damage. They should probably pull back. Loses a vet to rifleman squad for nothing. That is so very unfortunate. Two snipers on the field. 16 kills and one kill. So that's 18. Oh, wow. Taking damage from the boofers. But yeah, with uh, kills under their belt... Yeah, they've actually um, dealt with the MG42. 
The MG thieves have been dealt with. As I was saying, with the two snipers, now the Axis have a uh, very potent weapon to, uh, with which to clear sort of the central area of enemy infantry. The problem is, uh, the problem isn't the infantry, it's the Sherman and the emplacement. So they're gonna need to really manage this pack 40 correctly. And Pussy Destroyer's pack is also coming back for revenge. He has just built it. No, he's not just built it. He was probably just back in base reinforcing. Now the Sherman is in big shit, uh, but he's doing quite a number on the first pack 40. Taking a lot of rear armor hits from the SDKFZ. And uh, yeah, the Sherman's uh, pretty damaged, but he will eat Panzerfaust just at the edge of the range of the pack, with also uh, smoke rounds being deployed, so yeah, most likely the Sherman can just run away with just a sliver of hit, uh, hit points, so that's pretty good for him. Sniper. Sniper doing his thing. Yeah, two snipers is dangerous, especially against the Brits. Or, I mean, especially for the Brits. It's not really dangerous to go with us against the Brits because, well, it's only dangerous if uh, random mortars manage to hit the snipers, and that's not been happening. But yeah, the two snipers, very dangerous versus the Brits because, I mean, four men squads, very vulnerable to just double sniper. Now they finally know where the Bofors is, or at least, uh, you know, they have a position where, from where they can bombard it. And the right side has been mostly reclaimed by Pussy Destroyer. Uh, looks like the Major is trying to come in to cap, but it's not gonna work. Enemy forces are securing our territory. It's not gonna work. Run away. Rip. Boom. Mortar round. Looks like to clear the German uh, right side garrison, they have to use the British Arty. That's kind of okay. But in general, I'm thinking that if the Allies make a big combined offensive, Okay, uh, so we need to pause this. If they make a big... Again, I wish I could just draw things on the map. Anyway, if they make a big combined offensive somewhere like here, at the juncture of the two uh, of the two German players, they can really do a lot of damage, I feel like. But the problem, once again, is the SimCity is really limiting the options of the British player because he's only got... Like, his main investment when it comes to resources and pop cap, his main combat power at this point lies in his Bofors, to be completely honest. His Bofors and his Mortar Pit. These, are, these two are the things that can do the most damage for him. And of course, he can't move them, so it is really a double-edged sword. Yes, it is strong. Yes, it is cost-effective, but you can't move it, so... You can't move that cost effectiveness anywhere else. You're relying on your enemies to fight battles where you would want them to, which is never that good of an idea. So right now, the problem is that Top Star is uh, basically forced to go at it alone, as you can see, moving on the right side with some infantry and trying to get the M8 Scott and the Sherman support. But his friend can't really do too much to help him out, even if he wanted to, which I'm not sure if he wants to. So while uh, the Axis are really in a bad position, overall, uh, you could say that the Axis are kind of 2v1ing it right about now. At least where it matters. I wonder if Top Star is actually going for a uh, for a Pershing right now. 
Because he might be wanting to get that, but still, uh, three and a half CPs away is quite a long time. Anyway, time to speed it up. In terms of the Germans, we have Tier 3 coming up and Tier 3 up. For Pussy Destroyer, oh, here's the Panzer IV. So Panzer IV and uh, with Adamir Magnum, I'm not sure he might be going for Tier 4. But yeah, uh, Panzer IV is a great, great addition because it's going to help against the Sherman. Also, ooh, this might be problematic. Sherman, once again, walking into that AT gun. Not a good thing. Looks like he met some infantry. Not gonna happen for him. Firefly. Okay, so looks like the Brits are gonna transition into TDs, and uh, I mean, going into tank destroyers at this point. While I can't see why he would do that, I am not really sure about this. If I were him, I would have gone for mediums because, like, top star. Oh, he's going for two spots. Yeah, it looks like um, it looks like they're gonna need some mediums. But oh well, we'll see. Grenades coming through on the German infantry. That's gonna force them to escape. And without the support of the infantry, the Panzerkampfwagen 4 can't really deal with the Firefly, so yeah, that's easy enough. A second P4 is on the field on the center for Ademir Magnum, so actually it looks like Ademir Magnum will also go for tier 3 units. He was trying to push up, but looks like he hit a mine, so he's in trouble. Stormtrooper is going to cap the left side of the map, which is pretty clutch, because at this point we have 93 VPs left for the Axis and 488 for the Allies, so the Allies were really starting to move into that victory phase with the VPs, but with the Stormtroopers capturing the left, that is at least slowed down. Heavy Engineers not really having a good time, as well as the MG42, or no, that's actually the Vickers. Vickers and uh, Heavy Engineers both dying to the Snipers, nicely sniped into the back of that MG crew, and now looks like the Scots will try to deal with the Snipers, but the Snipers will be out of dodge soon enough, I'm guessing. Panzer Shreks, uh, just kind of, um, you know, keeping the Sherman away. Not bad. One bit. Oh, wow. Stormtroopers actually being upgraded with STG 44s. And that's been very devastating against these uh, infantry sections that sent the first one packing and it sent the second one packing. So, pretty bad. Can he steal the Browning? Yes, he can. Well done. Now that's a dangerous squad. The enemy are attacking an emplacement. Damned enemies tried to take a point from us. The new engineer section is waiting for orders. Oh, blimey. I'm a Sherman Firefly. More tank destroyers. Wow, that is a lot of TDs. Again, I feel like mediums would be very, very useful for them right about now. And why are they not capping this VP is beyond me, to be honest. Like, the Germans are at 93 VPs. All that they need to do is hold two of them for, well, K. Uh, so six, uh, 270, that's like, I'm an idiot, that's like four and a half minutes? Yeah, all they need to do is they need to hold for four and a half minutes, and uh, yeah, they're gonna have victory. Okay, he's capping that, that's good. But it looks like the center is uh, in big trouble. So finally the Bofors will die. And now there's a 17 pounder coming up. But the 17 pounder is a pretty bad idea because we already have a Firefly for Spielführer. 
Uh, and uh, there isn't really much in terms of anti-infantry defenses over here. So what I would have done is I would have pos positioned a second Bofors there. Because, you know, you need to protect the VP against enemy infantry, not against enemy tanks. So, yeah, I feel like this is not the best idea ever. Rear echelon troops. More mortars. More support gun. Anyway, yeah, if the Germans, like, that, that's what the Allies need to do to win. Right now, the Germans need to continue putting up pressure on the left side and continue putting up artillery on the center. And then perhaps trying to uh, put up some pressure on the right side as well. Looks like the Sherman just got destroyed by probably the Panzer IV. Let's see, does he have the kill? No, he does not. Does the AT gun have the kill? Maybe. He does have a vehicle destroyed, so it might be that. And, uh, oh yeah, look at that. That's a lot of infantry coming through on the left. As you can see, we're at 75 points for the Axis. So they really need to, again, put up pressure on the left side. And... Uh, try to get some artillery on the center to prevent them from digging in too deeply. Of course, we also have a Bofors coming in in a very ballsy position uh, ahead of the VP. I myself would have placed it behind so that it was farther away from the range of enemy artillery weapons. And it uh, looks like on the right, the Scots have caught up with the German infantry force, so yeah. That's going to be the end of that attempt. Oh, Stuka. Big Stuka. Wait. Oh! Oh! Oh, shit! Looks like we do have the close the pocket. 200 munitions, breakthrough. Oh, that's why he sent those troops there. He used breakthrough and um, capitalized and uh, essentially neutralized the VP, or sorry, not the VP, the point here. Also, he managed to neutralize this one with the Stuka break supply line. And now he's got uh, closed the pocket on all of these British emplacements and on the Firefly, which is using self-repair. That's not good. He's also taking... Yes, that is great. There goes the mortar. And uh, there goes the forward assembly and the engineers. More rockets. Absolutely demolished. Uh, looks like he will... F yeah, he will uh, recap the VP. Or sorry, not the VP. Again, the uh, strategic point. But it's a little bit too late. Destroyed the 17-pounder with a uh, Shuka close air support bombing run. So only the Bofors is left of that whole Sim City. So Sim City was busted by the breakthrough and the close the pocket. Now they need to clear up this Bofors and take the center. Looks like the British are going to try to make a Bofors on the left-hand side. That's a pretty bad decision, in my opinion, because, again, the problem is not... Oh, 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 also, looks like something destroyed the, um, the rifleman squad that was holding this point, so that opens up the left side as well. Again, I'm gonna repeat, the main problem for the Allies right now is gonna be to hold the center and the left VPs. So, honestly, this, like, isolated Bofors can't really do too much. Here comes the Scots to try to help against the AT gun, but they need to be careful. If they move in too close, they're gonna die to the AT guns. So the Germans are down to 38, and as you can see, they were able to neutralize this. Uh, and uh, now they're moving into the center. I mean, there's the two Scots. Yeah, sure, that's dangerous, but the snipers can just... Oh, no, why? I was going to say, the snipers can just be camouflaged. And then let the Grenadiers move in and get some Panzerfausts, but looks like they're going to try to use the Panzer IV as a spearhead. Not the best. Will we have an anti-tank grenade? Yes, we will. Panzer IV is gonna die due to the Jackson. 
Well done, of course, to Topstar, uh, drawing in the Panzer IV. That was very much overzealous by Adamir Magda moving in that Panzer IV. What might he be going for? He's still got tier 3 and no tier 4, so I'm guessing more Panzer IVs are going to be for him. Pussy Destroyer, on the other hand, is going for a tier 4, so that's probably going to be the person to get out some Panthers. Though, we do have the M26 Pershing Heavy Tank in the shadows, so this might be very, very dangerous. Here comes the second Panzer IV, tries to move in, get some fire on the Jacksons, but the Jacksons can ma very much match it round for round, and way more than overmatch it in terms of damage. Blizzard Destroyer actually has a lot of resources in the bank, so he needs to use that manpower for something. And now they have the center. Once again, 38 VPs destroys a squad. Now, here we here we go. We have the Pershing. So a lot of what the allies are going to do right now and, um, you know, the results are going to depend on the usage of this thing. This thing is very, very important. What? And yeah, as expected, this thing is gonna die. Anyway, uh, so we have a very, very strong armored force from Topstar. He's kind of lacking in infantry, but what he has is strong. Uh, whereas the Brits are just, well, now that they've lost their SimCity, they're really out of their element. And instead of going for more Fireflies, you know, to make up a big firing line of Fireflies, he's going for a Centaur. Uh, the Centaur is not a terrible decision because, again, the need is to deal with the enemy infantry. The enemy infantry that is threatening the VPs, and if they can keep those VPs, then they can keep a stranglehold on this game. Instead, well, right now they're still having problems. But, again, if they can get that Centaur to use, I don't think that they're going to have that many issues. A smart thing to do for the Allies would be to OP this strat point and maybe this strat point as well so that they can't just walk in with the infantry and, um, you know, use close the pocket or, uh, whatchamacallit, break supply line to cut it off. Sharpshooters getting a lot of kills. That's actually 46 kills between them, so that's not bad. They are, however, down to 25 points. Can they come back into this? Well, this is a big, big, big defensive line for the Allies. And I just don't see how the Germans can punch through all of this. Or rather, how the Allies can mess up enough for the Germans to have a shot at coming back. And, uh, ooh, nice rifleman. Gonna take out that anti-tank anti gun crew. That was a veteran C2 AT gun crew. Now we have that uh, Pussy Destroyer is trying to flank. They absolutely need to get some good flanks. The problem is the Centaur makes it difficult for just infantry to flank, whereas the uh, Tank Destroyers make it hard for just tanks to flank. So it's going to be all about like the coordination and the combined arms. We do have, however, the Panzer IV coming in, Breakthrough. And now vehicles can cap, and they can cap very quickly. It is broken through, and now we do have another close the pocket. Gonna fall down on the center of the Allies. Of course, the Panzer IV is gonna sacrifice its life to the American Doom Squad, the A-Team. But it is gonna manage to get the capping to a very, very high degree. Also, the Grenadiers over here capturing the right side. Well done, and now the close the pocket is gonna be, um, you know, devastating. Forces back everything that the allies have and lets the Axis uh, cap the VP. 
not that much damage actually inflicted on the allied forces, but the close the pocket was very, very, very effective. Oh, actually, it does destroy an M8 Scott. It was very, very effective, I was, I was going to say, in one thing. It did manage to allow the allies a way to capture the center VP, or sorry, not the allies, the Axis. So, with one victory point, the Axis are still in this game. And now they need to absolutely pour everything they have into defending this approach. Okay, I, I once again wish with all of my heart that I just had a drawing tool. Anyway, uh, defending this VP over here. Or, yeah, this VP in the center and this passageway. If they can Fermopolae it up over here, they're going to be in a... Well, that's a good spot. I feel like that's pretty impossible at this point. But they're not going to be in a terrible position. So that's going to be their main sort of... Uh, their main sort of thing like, they're, they're going to cling on to. Oh no, the Jackson's moving in against a lot of AT fire. I feel like this Jackson's going to die. He's pretty lucky. However, where's the MGs? They're here. The MGs can provide a lot of suppression against these riflemen, and if they can pin the riflemen, then they cannot uh, cap these VPs. Can't for moving in to try to get some extra damage on them, but uh, ooh, here comes a Panzer Ripper. This could be devastating. Pins one of the rifleman squads. The second rifleman squad is gonna get pinned right now by the MG fire just at the last possible second. Had this guy been pinned like five seconds later, he would have gotten the cap, and he would that would have been the victory. The Jackson, in the meantime, died. That is a veterancy-free unit of great importance. So that going down is absolutely not great. Not great one bit. Uh, Centaur still on the field, now finally starting to get some damage done. But once again, the Allies are kind of piecemealing their armor in there, so the Centaur is pushed away, just like the, pan uh, the Jackson was destroyed. The Centaur is forced to retreat. Uh, looks like the Axis will try on the right side to defend with the bunker, but um, yeah, now that the Centaur AA tank and the Sherman Firefly can come in, that's going to open up the whole path, but is it enough? The two Centaurs are going to have a lot of planes to shoot at very shortly. Here comes the Stuka, close air supports, you know, um, but they don't have line of sight, I'm guessing. But no, they do have line of sight because it's Centaur AAs, so since they shoot at the planes, they reveal themselves. Oh, well, that's kind of funny. Still, though, that was a pretty bad waste of uh, 200 munitions. That will... Oh, wow, they both kind of crashed into the same neighborhood. Heavy tank. Oh, that's a for... That uh, Panzer Werfer was so clutch. Well done to Pussy Destroyer. He's still got 1,400 manpower though. He, I feel like he might just buy machine guns and bunkers. I feel like if he can get... Yeah, he should just get another machine gun and put it into this building. Just as an extra. And maybe another AT gun as well to put under extreme right. So that it can uh, deal with any enemy armor that it moves in. A 17 pot. A 17 pounder. Okay, so you have 394 VPs. The enemy has one VP. That means that you have 394 as many tickets as the enemy. Now, if you have such a huge lead, and all that you need to do to win is take one point. One point, okay? You need to take one point. What do you do? You build things that can attack or that can dislodge enemy fortifications. So you either build medium tanks or fucking arty. Arty so that you can deal with all of this you know, on the back line. Medium tanks so that you can deal with these by flanking. And you can, you know, um, do some good things on the left side maybe. Put up pressure, destroy bunkers, help your infantry uh, make a raid on the right side VP so that they can cap it for like half a second and win the game. That sort of nonsense. Or you can build a fucking 17-pounder. 
and uh, it seems like Spielführer decided to go with a 17 pounder. I mean, seriously? Seriously, like, what, 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 why? Why 17 pounder? It's gonna cover this. It's like, yes, because the enemies have a lot of incentives to move here when they can simply sit just a tiny bit back and keep their VP. <sighs> you could have built a comet. Oh, he went Anvil. Well, he could have built Churchill's, I guess. Could have built Cromwell's. Could have built so many different things. There weren't 17 fucking pounders. And the 17 pounder is missing. Ooh, a big flank coming in from the Panther. That's actually dangerous for the Sherman Firefly. And the 17 pounder is being pretty useless against that. It's missing the Stoogs. Stoogs gonna do the bouncy bounce. Yo, I'm a Sherman Firefly. Man, the British are severely lacking in offensive capabilities. They really needed to get hammer tactics. He only went anvil, I think, because of the heavy engineers. He's, he's not using anything else. Every once in a while, he's putting down some Marty, I guess. And that might be helpful. Anyway, um... It seems like the allies are finally trying a nice flank. Here comes the centaurs and the rangers from one side. Gonna get behind the enemy. That's gonna really piss off these Stugs and make them uh, reface to the southwest. So right now is the time. They need to move in with the armor from the front. They really need to do this. Also, the AT gun is not on prioritized vehicles, so it's wasting shots on infantry. One of the Stugs is going to die. But here comes the flank from the Panther. The Panther is gonna get behind the enemy armor and uh, strike at the M8A1 howitzer mortar carriages, which is gonna allow uh, the German infantry a lot more breathing space. The Centaurs decide to not stay there. No, why? They should have just charged in and gotten in behind the AT guns and behind the Stugs. So that they could have, uh, you know, dealt a lot of damage and prevented these machine guns from firing and preventing them from capping just at the last possible second. The Panther, in the meantime, has been uh, running amok in the rear. It does die, but it buys enough time for the Grenadiers to save the center VP. Firefly goes down to the anti-tank gun fire. It seems like also, uh, no, this is the Jackson that died before. It seems like also the perishing wasn't really doing too much in this. Uh, in the meantime, Centaur is trying again to move in, but they're moving in from the center. They're not even trying to flank again. That's a terrible mistake because this is just gonna allow these AT guns to fire on them without repositioning, and bring the full force of their firepower to bear on them. So once again, they have to escape. Uh, it seems like the rear echelon troops were trying to capture the VP, but they got stopped by the MG42s that are still active and still blazing away into the center area with their seesaw bullets. So right now at this point, uh, yeah, what the Alex are relying on is the M8A1 howitzer motor carriages to clear up all of this, but the M8A1 decides to move in way too close to the enemy for some reason, so he dies to the AT guns. No, once again, the riflemen try to come in and cap the VP, but it's not enough. Here comes also some kind of red smoke, I have no idea what that is. The Pershing decides to move in without any kind of support, which is not going to work because of the Stugs that have not been destroyed. Honestly, maybe he could have just stuck there, the Pershing, and uh, shot one round at each Stug and destroyed both of them. Instead, it seems like... Everything, literally everything going perfectly for the Germans will keep them alive. Severe lack of coordination and target prioritization from the Allies means that none of the Stugs go down. Severe lack of decisiveness on their part means that the defensive line will just barely hold on when they could have just crashed into it with all their forces and gotten behind the AT guns with their armor. And that would have been a just absolutely massive slaughter of all the German forces in the area. Uh, not enough of a decisive flank from the infantry as well means that 
when finally later the big main central offensive came in from the allied squads the machine guns had had already time to deal with flank from the rangers and could just reposition and now once again the germans are given a third shot at life when they probably should have been defeated And once again, actually, uh, Spielführer is making a big mistake in terms of what he's building and why, where, and uh, how. You know, the enemy has a close the pocket. Why the f fuck are you not building a uh, cache on the left side strategic point that can be easily decapped while the right side is contested? Because guess what right now? There's two Stugs, there's a P4. Something can go here, decap this. This is contested. And then you build all of this stuff exactly where it's gonna get closed pocketed. Like literally, it's exactly where it's gonna get closed pocketed. So you build and stack all of this stuff on muddy ground, essentially. I don't know. Uh, perishing also, ooh, not not having fun but the panther is just barely disabled by the infantry the other American have tried to move in but there's a bunker and uh, oh crap centaur is trying to flank but they find a p4 so that's not very good for them and uh, now the stugs are gonna respond and get around and oh no they're gonna try to escape through the enemy lines why didn't you do this like two minutes ago oh had he done this two minutes ago he would have been in such a great position but now just now he decides to do it and does it too late yeah it looks like the jackson will go down axis infantry can hold the, the vp wipes out a vet free rifleman here comes the stormtroopers they're gonna cap this the Panzer IV is capping this. Oh wait, why? Should probably uh, should probably not done that because now that that does tell them what you're gonna do. Ah uh, well, that was um, a little bit unfortunate, kind of giving away the position. But he, yeah, he's he's gonna get the, at least the decap, decap, and here we go. Close the pocket. So once again, the Sim City is uh, gonna be crushed. Here comes the rockets. Here comes the bombs. The enemy have destroyed a forward position. Tell us where and where. An emplacement is being did brace, but I mean that just allows the access to move in and uh, you know do their thing. These grandiers should probably be kinda careful about where they go. Yeah, there's a lot of explosions happening all around here. Lots of damage on the AT gun, destroyed the AT gun. Yet more close the pocket is probably going to come down on the Bofors, but the Bofors is uh, basically now without the protection of the 17-pounder. So without the 17-pounder, the Stugs can move in and destroy it. Oh my god, Spielführer! Why did you have to do this to us? There he goes. And uh, there probably goes the mortar soon enough. Anyway, it's gonna be the end. Oh my god. I blame the British player. <laughs> In case you did not notice, I definitely bl blame the Brits. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Our foes have 300 points remaining. Increase your efforts. Yeah, they're trying to move on the right. Finally, they're gonna destroy the bunker. If Pussy Destroyer had built an MG, he'd be in a easier position right now, but now he can just come in with the Panther. You know, Stug's coming in also. And uh, yeah, so because of all of this, the allies cannot move in, but, but they can reach here. However, it's too late because the Grenadier is capping the left. So just once again, the Germans are gonna clutch it just barely once again i feel like a machine gun here would be a great idea now would it there goes the pershing 
There goes Stug in the center because there's another 17 pounder. Is this the fourth one or is this the third one? Sapa's backed off all strength. I guess he's not a uh, unit, so I can't see how many he built. Rip. A point is being Looks like the Jackson can at least kill the Panther, but he's gonna get uh, Panzerfausted by the Jaeger Command Squad. Engine destroyed. Uh, actually, abandoned. Sure. Nothing can cap the center. Some things, however, can cap the right, so if I were the Germans, I'd try to rush for the left, or sorry, for the right as soon as possible, because the left is in danger. Uh, they are rushing to the right with these guys, so that's pretty good. And yet another close the pocket to destroy yet another round of SimCity. I mean, some people just do not learn now, do they? Still, this is very risky. However, he can just cap this, you know. This is still very risky because had he been just five seconds too late on, uh, you know, capturing this. Spielfuhrer says GG well played. I'm guessing because he thinks he's going to get the win there. Is he going to? No, it's neutral. One to one to zero. Again, had he been two, 10 seconds too late, he would have gotten the win, but he didn't. And there we go. That's the end of that. So now with, uh, you know, not that much resources from these guys, I mean, they could just, like, wait a while. <laughs> Literally, they could, like, wait for a long, long time and try to rebuild and try to see if the Germans make mistakes, but at this point, the Germans... You know, control most of the map. So, yeah. They can probably just triple cap it at this point. Yep, here comes the P4. I'm gonna cap that DP with the breakthrough. And uh, now he can use that. There we go. That's the end of that. Some fucking good uh, encirclement doctrine play. That is That was pretty fucking nice. And, of course, you know... Uh, I guess you know my opinion on the Allies. Uh, you know, American doing pretty okay. Maybe could have used this uh, manpower better. But the British. Oh my god, the British. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's the end of that. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon.